Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about administrative distance. AD is used along with the metric to decide which of the available paths is going to make it into the routing table. A router will typically only learn routes to a particular destination from a single routing protocol. It's not normal for an organization to be running multiple different routing protocols. When multiple routes to a destination are learned through a routing protocol, the router will install the path or paths with the best, meaning the lowest, metric into the routing table. And different routing protocols use different methods to calculate that metric. For example, let's say we're using RIP as our routing protocol and we want to get to our particular destination and we've got two different paths to get there. The first path goes from router A to B to C to D. So A to B to C to D would be a hop count of three and we've got another path which is A to B to D which would have a hop count of two. RIP uses hop count as its metric. It's gonna put the shortest hop count into the routing table. So in this example, A, B, D would be preferred. Now we might have exactly the same network topology but we're using OSPF. And with OSPF, maybe path A, B, C, D has got a cost of 60 and path A, B, D has got a cost of 100 because the A, B, D path has got lower bandwidth links. Remember, OSPF takes the bandwidth into account by default. And with our metric, it's always the lowest value that is preferred. So with OSPF, it would be the other path, A, B, C, D, that would be used making it into the routing table. If paths to the same destination are received from different routing protocols, for, if for some reason your organization is running multiple routing protocols and a router receives routes to the same destination from those different routing protocols, then it can't compare their metrics to each other. For example, a rip hop count of five can't be compared to an OSPF cost of 60. That comparison would be meaningless because the routing protocols calculate the metric in completely different ways. It's like they're talking foreign languages, so you can't compare one routing protocol metric to another. The router needs to use a different method to choose when routes to the same destination are received from different routing protocols. And that's what we use the administrative distance for. The administrative distance is a measure of how trusted a particular routing protocol is. If routes to the same destination are received via different routing protocols, the protocol with the best, which is the lowest AD value, wins. So with the metric, the lowest is best. With AD, it's the same. The lowest number is best. And this slide here shows the default AD values of our popular routing protocols. So worst is RIP with a value of 120. Then we've got ISIS at 115. OSPF has an AD of 110. EIGRP is the most preferred of our IGPs. It's got an AD of 90. External BGP has 20. A static route has a default AD of one and connected interfaces will always be preferred. They have an administrative distance of zero. So administrative distance is used to choose between multiple paths and learned via different routing protocols. Metric is used to choose between multiple paths learned with the same routing protocol. The administrative distance is considered first to narrow the choice down to the single best routing protocol, and then the metric is considered to choose the best path for paths, which will make it into the routing table. We can see what's happening with a show IP route command. So show IP route will show us what routes did make it into the routing table. 
you can see from here connected routes have got an administrative distance of zero they're always going to be most preferred we've also got some routes in here that were learned from rip as well and you see the digits in the square brackets that shows us the administrative distance and the metric the first value is the administrative distance. We already know that RIP has got an AD of 120. The second value is the metric. So here the first route has got a hop count of 1. The second route has got a hop count of 2. So let's talk through an example. Let's say we've got a router and it receives multiple routes to the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 network. It receives those routes from both OSPF and RIP. So when paths to the same destination are received from multiple routing protocols, the administrative distance is considered first before the metric. OSPF has got a better administrative distance than RIP, so the RIP routes are going to be discarded. Then the router will compare the routes we've received via OSPF and install the one with the lowest cost into the routing table. If we received multiple equal cost paths, then they'll all go into the routing table and the router will load balance between them. Another thing we can do is floating static routes. Okay, so what I just covered is your standard core information for AD. This is some extra information here. If the best path to a destination is lost, for example, because a link went down, it will be removed from the routing table when the router detects that and replaced with the next best route. Now, we might want to configure a static route as a backup for the route learned via a routing protocol. For example, maybe we're worried the entire routing protocol was going to go down. A problem if we want to do this is that static routes have a default administrative distance of 1, so they're always going to be preferred over routes learned via an IGP. So if we're running an IGP, we've got IGP routes in there, and we want to add a static route as a backup, that won't work by default because it's going to be preferred over the IGP rather than being the second choice. So how can we make that static route the second choice? The way we can do that is with using a floating static route. When we do this, we change the administrative distance of a static route from the default of 1 to having a higher AD value, an AD value which is higher than the administrative distance of our routing protocol. For example, say if we were using OSPF and we've got our network topology you see in the diagram here. We're running OSPF along the path from R4 to R3 to R2 to R1 and R5 is not running OSPF. Let's say it's a router that does not support OSPF. So we'll have OSPF being used with the first choice path going along the top from R4 to R3 to R2 to R1 and we want to configure a backup static route on R4 that is going to send the traffic through R5 but only if the top path is not available. So we can't add a normal static route because then it would go through R5 as a first choice. So the command we enter is IP route. 10.0.1.0, 255.255.255.0, selecting R5 as the next hop, and then we put in an extra keyword at the end here, we say 115. That sets an AD of 115, which is higher than the OSPF AD of 110, so this will be used as a backup route. Now obviously we'd also need to add static routes coming back in the other direction along the bottom path and we'd also need a static route going from R5 to R1. Another example, you can also use floating static routes where you're using static routes only. So here again on R4, I could have first choice going to 10.1.1.2, which is on R3. I could have my second choice for the 10.0.1 network going to 10.1.3.2, which is on R5. I would do that by giving it an administrative distance of 5. If I just entered both of these routes without an administrative distance, it would load load balance between the two of them. By adding the second route with an AD of 5, it's only the first route that will make it into the routing table. But if the link from R4 to R3 goes down, it will be removed from the routing table and we will use the second route instead. 
Now, a word of warning with this, if I go back a slide, if you do a floating static route as a backup for OSPF, if any of the links from R4 to R1 go down, OSPF will detect that and the route will be removed from the routing table. So that will work just fine. But with our second example, this will work if the link from R4 to R3 goes down because R4 will detect that. But if the link from R3 to R2 or R2 to R1 goes down, R1 won't know and it will continue sending traffic along the trot path and it only get as far as R3 where the broken link is and then the traffic is going to fail. So this will work fine if you just have that one router with nothing else along the path, but if you do have other routers along the path, be careful with this one, you could end up causing problems. Okay, so that was our administrative distance. Next up, we'll take a look at it in the lab. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.